to the front of the sign. <laughs> it's Mom and Mary Carol going down. We've had a nice drive, very <laughs> a desolate sort of drive, up to this Katie Fields site. That's good, here we are. Just don't step backwards. You don't need to stand still, this isn't a photograph. Video <laughs> <You> can, <anyway>. <laughs> <laughs> right, video. You can move and then get the cliffs. <laughs> From the map, you know, the ocean kind of bends around. It's Sligo. It's pretty much straight down. Where's this crevice? It's right up there. Well, you can't see into it. Yeah. All right. Half and half between it and certain death. Oh gosh. Must be fairly sure of itself. You can see it getting sort of carried away at this crash is nice. I just want to get more over there. Oops. Yeah, on the edge <laughs> just turf cutting has gone on here for a number of years as peat production where they cut away the peat or the turf and you'll see it all evidence all around this field here when you're walking along it's like extra steps up in the bog you see just even behind you there you see like an extra step up in the bog and that's where they cut the peat or the turf from so they've been cutting it here for a long time um, but most of it is between about four and six meters of blanket bog covers it over now that's particularly on top of the hillside it hasn't been cut away and obviously it would be deeper when it's on top of a hillside so just want to show you now this map here and this is what Cage of Fields would have looked like over 5,000 years ago. So the pink field is the one we're standing in. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Very hard. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very soft as you go down. Was the, oh, the alignment of the field always along the fall line like this? Straight towards? Yeah. Straight, straight towards, here. yeah. That's all. Oh, well, here at Cage, that's the passion of it all. Okay. Anyone else want to take a go? You're a very quiet group. We don't have cues here for this part. How do, how, do the, how do the people gravitate to this area? The Neolithic people. If you look around you, it's a fantastic view they would have had. Would you blame them? And well, they they probably weren't were opening here, up a resort, though. No. Like it was very different back then. It was it was very fertile soil, great farming land back then. And um, it's very hard to kind of get in the mines. Then why would they come here? So there would have been in other parts of Ireland as well. So maybe uh -huh. they would, and they migrated here from other parts of Ireland. Is that it? Yeah, possibly the northern half. I see. And maybe they come in at the shore here. Should be lower the rent. And to make a long story short, anyways, because this goes on for hours and hours, this story, particularly this afternoon night, if you listen to it. But St. <laughs> Patrick lost his temper with Crumb Dove and hit the ground with his staff. And that's how they say the sea staff really broke away and left Crumb Dove to perish on it and to be eaten by the cage in it. So that's the more popular belief in there. You don't have to believe it now if you don't want to. It's just what I have to believe. So, that was um, about 600 million years ago, those cliffs back there at Beldarig. So you can all feel very young now with that thought. <laughs> so does anyone have any questions for me? So those are where they've marked the wall right as it goes there, along. And this is where you see the wall Asia. uncovered. And this is done in the late 70s. So you see how the bog is growing over and covering over the stone wall for a second time um, here. So I always think this is an ideal opportunity to talk a little bit about our bog. So I'll just um, quickly kind of give you some facts and figures. First of all, bog is, what bog is, it's just partially decayed plants that gradually build up on top of each other, layer up and layer. Um, blanket bog is very like slow growth. It's about one millimetre a year it grows at and it's been grown here for over 4,000 years on this hillside. Um, 
Also you need, it's 90% water. You may have noticed when you walk along, it's very spongy, um, the bog. It's 90% water in winter time and it dries out to be between about 50 and 60%. Make space for grazing and to make grassland. Um, but while doing that, they expose the very mineral rich soil, the great fertile land here, to about 70% more rainfall than it would have been used to. Around that time, the climate changes as well and it gets wetter, so um, again, there's more rainfall coming down the soil. So basically, all the minerals were leached or washed out of the soil. They accumulated together and formed the iron pan at the base of the soil. So the water couldn't drain through this iron pan, so the soil would obviously become waterlogged. The example is just right there in front of you. And the only plants that grow in wet conditions that are our bog plants. So they started to grow here at Kaja, and that's a very basic explanation of how the bog develops um, as well. So that just explains why they left, the land got too wet and they couldn't farm it anymore. And second of all, why this is such a huge site. It's becoming quite here. overgrown again. But um, this is known as our domestic enclosure or the house site here at Kaja. And really what that circle stones is, um, just a fence they would have built outside to stop the cattle possibly coming in on top of them. And, um, the reason there is a house, a wooden hut, would have originally stood inside there. And the reason they were like, they actually found um, six post holes in the soil inside there. So we know the house was about six metres in diameter and it would have housed about six people. It's a very, very small one because here at Kaja, they're generally between 10 and 14, the house. This is a particularly um, small one here. And just to show you the huge excavation you can see was done here. Some of the biggest, um, biggest excavations that was done. And they found um, a number of flint scrapers here. And that's the most common thing you find at any excavation um, at Kaja. And they're just simply circular bits of flint. And their main use was for cleaning flesh off the animal hide. You can just imagine, just because they're very sharp. And they also found some arrowheads as well, and they're used in hunting the wild animals. And um, just to show you, like you see these stone walls are very low. They seem, well, they obviously collapsed now, but they were, originally were about a metre high. So they weren't um, for defensive purposes, they were just for keeping cattle in the field. So there was a very peaceful time. It appears to us it was a very peaceful time, these um, farmers living in. Like there was no threat coming from within this community or coming from outside um, this community as well. And then just down to the right, the centre there, um, Again, they did a huge excavation before they started building um, the centre and they found the top of a stone plough and plough marks in the soil mm. and pollen from wheat, which they sent away for paleological analysis. And we know that the family inside there were growing crops there about 5,700 years ago. And carbon dating has brought the date up to 5,800 years ago. So we're getting very close to that 6,000 mark. So we'll have to come back to see when we eventually make it. Um, but I just want to say to you as well, like, you know, as, as someone asked me earlier, where did they come from? But also, look, another few facts about them um, as well, like their average lifespan of the farmers that came here to Kaja uh, would have been about 35 years of age. And their average height was about 5'2 for the male and about 5 foot for the female. That's for, like, living in Ireland. And um, also, like, where did they go to once they left the Kaja here? And they think they would have possibly tried to make their living from the sea when they couldn't make it from the land anymore. Remember I was explaining about the land got very wet. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of backed up, but there's a lot of fishing villages all over North Mayo. And also there's a lot of early Bronze Age monuments, and that's the age straight after the Neolithic age. So that's the age of right. And there's over 40 of them here in this region um, alone. So that makes it the highest concentration of court tombs in all of Europe. So it's another claim to fame we have. So the reason it's called a court tomb um, or a court cairn, it's got a courtyard right at the entrance. And uh, just quickly tell you a few things about them because again the court tombs tell us an awful lot, an awful lot about the farmers that were living here because um, they cremated their dead at the entrance of the tomb and then placed their remains in the chambers there with lots of implements and pottery and different tools. So there was some belief in an afterlife with these farmers. Um, but unfortunately they never wrote anything down, they never um, etched the rocks here so we don't know what they actually believed in. And second of all, um, they're large buildings and a lot of work went in. There were stones were quarried out for them. And there would have been very like um, magnificent buildings dotted all over these hillsides here 5,000 years ago. So we know there was a great respect for the dead when they went to all that trouble, you know, building these huge court tombs. And just the last thing about them, I always think it's the most interesting thing about these court tombs. They're not built for one farmer here. They're built for everybody within this community. So it seems like everybody was seen as equal. So everybody was buried in these court tombs together as well. And that's backed up with, um, for every house site here at Kaja, there's two strips of land come with it. So every farm is exactly the same amount of land. So it like, seems like equality. It's very dom you know, like it seems very dominant here um, at Kaja. I'm not sure what he's doing there. I was wondering if he was trimming off the bark to kill the tree, uh, ringing it effectively as a prelude to uh, um, clearing it. But this is a, a drawing of what, what the landscape would have 
would have looked like 5,000 years ago with the cattle in the um, enclosed fields and more on the hillside there. The dry stone walls. So rather than be having um, big herds of cattle, they just had whatever um, each family had, probably a handful, I guess. And then there were forests of oak and elm and hazel. And then they also did some farming. Oh, this is, this is modern day, I guess. So this is... I see that's the growth of the bog. That's what that is showing. So those are the walls with the bog. Uh, growing over the top of it, and then nowadays, the people coming in to dig the turf and then finding it underneath. No.